Hello, I'm Amelia Morris, Chief Communications Officer for the City of Des Moines. Welcome to City Talk. Well, spring is just around the corner, and here at City Talk, we're already thinking about springing forward by starting a new business and outdoor fun like the Blank Park Zoo. Today, we'll visit with Terry Vobrick from the City's Office of Economic Development and Gary Scrutchfield, President of Lumberman's Drywall and Roofing Supply. Both of them will help us learn about the emerging 200 initiative here in Des Moines, also known as the E200 program, which is designed to help inner city entrepreneurs grow their business. And as our second guest, we have Ryan Bickle. He is the marketing director for the Blank Park Zoo. He'll tell us about the new projects and programs that are on tap at the zoo this year. We have some real news that you can use, so stay tuned. City Talk will be right back after these messages. Visit Des Moines, we have it all. Welcome back. We're on location today at Lumberman's Drywall and Roofing Supply, located at 1350 Tuttle Street on the southwestern end of downtown Des Moines. My guests, are the president of the company, Gary Scrutchfield, and Terry Volbrick from the city's Office of Economic Development. Now we're here because a picture is worth a thousand words, and we wanted you to see the success of the Emerging 200 Initiative in Des Moines, also known as the E200 program. Gentlemen, welcome both of you to City Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to begin by maybe educating some of you who don't know about the program. So I'm going to ask Terry to tell us, what is the E200 program about? The E200 program is a program sponsored by the U.S. Small Business Administration. It's focused at bringing together small businesses within the city of Des Moines that, have a, that show a high potential of growth and to provide them with networking and other resources to help them build a sustainable business and a sustainable growth plan. Uh, the training is targeted at a level for owners and senior executives of the small business. Mm -hmm. And the classes are really kind of a graduate school type of environment with the object that they have a thoughtful expansion strategy and a path for their next stage of their business growth. Okay, now you've mentioned two things. You talked about classes. Um, what exactly does this program do? You have a curriculum, is it networking, is it on-the-job training? How, in a nutshell, would you tell me what does this program do for small businesses? What the, what the program is designed to do is take that senior level executive mm -hmm. or the owner of the business, mm -hmm. take them out of the business and put them in a class environment with other owners, mm -hmm. with other small business owners, and it gives them an opportunity to work on the business as opposed to working every day in the business. Okay. Okay. Right. There are roughly 80 hours of training over six months, uh, spread out over the over the course. Of, I believe they meet once one night every two weeks. Correct. Uh, it allows them the strategies they look at about developing growth strategies and objectives for their company, exploring financing options about debt and equity, okay. uh, identifying new markets, including exports for their business, mm -hmm. understanding and evaluating the opportunities in government contracting, and expanding a peer-to-peer -peer community resource networking. They have the opportunity to meet other small business owners and realize that they're not operating their small business in a vacuum, mm -hmm. that there are common issues that that owners can have the opportunity to sit down and discuss and, and resolve among themselves. Okay. How long has this program been in operation in Des Moines? This will be our fifth year uh, okay. that the program is available within the city of Des Moines. Okay. 
Well, Gary, uh, let me ask you a few questions. How did you find out about E200? Actually, <clears throat> the inaugural class was in 2008, and I was going through the business section of the Des Moines Register, mm -hmm. and there was a little blurb on, on the E200 program and how it could benefit small business. Uh, I'm of a firm believer that continuing education is very important and at our level, so an opportunity to learn about certain areas in the business that I felt I could use, one of them was what was important to me at the time, was dealing with bankers. Uh, I have uh, uh, opportunities to expand the business and I'm also looking at buying another company down the road after the economy improves. So I felt that it was important to be able to discuss at their level what the, the growth plan was. The classroom setting uh, I felt was, was very important because it allowed me to be in a room full of people that have the same concerns, mm -hmm. the same growth ideas, but we could share ideas and everything is very strictly confidential and you could share your deepest thoughts and what you, your goals were and they would help you move forward with it. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your company, the size, uh, what are your products and services, uh, who are your customers? We are, uh, we've been in business since 1948. The size of our company is uh, right at the present time we have 16 full-time employees. Mm -hmm. We deal with the professional contractors, the architects, the general contractors, mm -hmm. and we also do a lot with our uh, retail roofing side to the homeowners of properties as this room shows we bring a lot of people in and do and show them what the opportunities are in the roofing industry okay well as i look around this room i see a lot of products but i don't technically know the name of what i'm looking at so can you just tell me in layman's terms what it is that you retail we we actually what's directly behind us is a synthetic roofing material it was developed approximately 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and it gives the end consumer a product similar to slate. However, it is easier to install and, and the product carries a 50-year warranty. Wow. Beyond that, we move into asphalt products that uh, are standardized that, that you can see, but we cater to the upper end material. When people and professionals want the correct way done, we spend a tremendous amount of time training our customers mm -hmm. so that the material is installed correctly. This room was a direct result of the E200 program. So uh, you, you, you know, the tires meet the pavement. We came back and, and in my group, we designed this and it has been very successful for us. Oh, I can, I can see why just looking around and having all those products touch and feel um, as a shopper, that's important. Yes. <laughs> Tell me why, what, you read this in the register, but what inside of you said, I want to do this. I want to be in this program. The opportunity to meet with other business people was very critical. But mm -hmm. on, on the personal note, uh, my background is marketing and operations. I felt that the, the banking side I could improve. And then after several phone calls to Joe Folsom, the director of the SBA, who was uh, initiative in getting this program going, I felt it would be invaluable to have the opportunity because banking and having the opportunity to sit down with bankers one-on-one -on -one and talk to them about what they wanted out of small business so they could decide on whether they wanted to go forward and make you a loan or not. Um, because of that, in 2009, I had been with the same banking facility for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they received a new president. Mm -hmm. He came into my office and informed me because of all the problems with the home building industry. He no longer wanted to do business with us. And so I was faced with a situation where all the training that I received in class, it was invaluable because it allowed me to go meet with many bankers in the Des Moines area and I was way ahead of the curve on what they were looking for and what they needed. And because of that, we're going along today and a profitable company. Boy, that is extremely valuable. It was. That's extremely valuable. Okay. Um, I've heard a lot now then how this has impacted your business from this room to the banking. Uh, for an entrepreneur interested in this program, what would you tell him how E200 can impact your business? The E200 program is slated to look at every aspect of a small business owner's entrepreneurship. What it does is you talk about marketing, you talk about banking, you talk about employee issues. Virtually every problem that you run into is on the table. Mm -hmm. about how to go forward. The other thing of it, another again, a direct result, is at the end of the program, you are required to write a three-year business plan. 
And at the end of 2011, I was happy to review my business plan, and I only missed one objective out of it. But then again, I re reassessed it, and now I'm looking forward to 2015 so we can move forward. What it does is it allows people to talk and look at their business in a different manner, third party, step back, mm -hmm. and it is actually taken apart by your fellow classmates in your study group, and they ask all those questions that you don't want to ask yourself, yes. but you need to. So that was invaluable. Kind of lets you get outside of the box and look at, look at it in fresh eyes from, from an outside perspective. Very much so. Wow, that, that's really, this is a wonderful program. Uh, Terry, how many applicants do you have for E200, or how many participants have you had so far? The class size is limited to 15 companies per session. Mm -hmm. We have a new session that will be starting up this spring, and we're in the process right now of accepting applications. Wonderful. All right, then if I'm interested or anyone is interested, how do I apply? What do I do? Where do I go? Be happy to contact the City of Des Moines Office of Economic Development at uh, 283 4004, mm -hmm. or you can contact Joe Folsom with the U.S. Small Business Administration at their offices at the Federal Building. Is there information on your website? Yes, there is. You can go to the City of Des Moines uh, website and download the information on the program uh, okay. as and, well. Okay. Uh, let's quickly tell me um, what is the criteria? Um, it, is it a small mom and pop startup with, with you know, operating out of their kitchen or are you looking at a firm size business that's already operating? The, bus the business, the small business should have been in operations for at least three years okay. and have revenues in the neighborhood of $400,000 per year okay. and showing a, an opportunity for expansion. In the future? In the, yes. Is there a cost to participate in this program? There is no cost except the time and energy that the small business owner is asked to put in to work on their business. That's amazing. Okay, who teaches the classes, these classes that you talk about? Because there's some <coughs> curriculum, and I want people to also know there's some networking going on, obviously. Very much so. The instructor is Monica Dolezal. The curriculum was written from Boston College mm -hmm. and then endorsed by the SBA. So it is formal training and she handles it, her being a, a banker by trade in a, in a previous life and now she's an instructor. She is able to pull out and ask all the questions and the right questions for any business owner that wants to move forward in growing their business. Wow. This is really wonderful information for, for the business community, particularly for small business. So thank you both. I know people will have a wealth of questions, so we're going to follow Terry's lead and recommend that you go to the City of Des Moines website at www.dmgov.org. You want to click on City Manager. You want to click on the Office of Economic Development, and there you'll find information on the E200 program. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Thank, thank you. you both. In the second half of our show, we have one of the best places in Des Moines for fun, the Blank Park Zoo. Some of the things that you can do and see at the zoo might surprise you. But first, we're going to have our city update with Shekinah Young, who has news from city government operations. Shekinah? I'm Shekinah with this month's city update. Spring is in the air, and you know what that means, spring vacations and spring break trips. The Des Moines International Airport is at your service for all your travel plans. In the past year alone, the terminal has been completely remodeled with new seating and recharging stations for laptops and cell phones. Even self-check-in kiosks were placed through the terminal, reducing lines for passengers with carry-on only luggage. A new rental car facility was completed as well, and an economy parking lot. The newest addition of Southwest Airlines to Des Moines is sure to turn some heads. Even the Des Moines International Airport's website has seen some changes with easy step-by-step -step instructions assisting in flight reservations, car rentals, maps and directions, even baggage check-in. Check out their website at www.dsmairport.com. Speaking of spring breaks and spring vacations, don't forget your spring cleaning. The City of Des Moines Public Works Department is beginning its spring cleanup to remove urban blight program. It's commonly called scrub. This will run March through October. 
The first scrub event is scheduled for Saturday, March 17th. Call 515-283-4950 for more information or visit the city's website at www.dmgov.org and click on Public Works. Though we haven't had much of a winter, it sure is nice to enjoy some sunshine. We want you to enjoy that sunshine and come out to all the city of Des Moines has to offer. From its various parks and trail systems to outdoor events and recreations offered by the Des Moines Park and Recreation Department. Check out their website at www.dmparks.org. It's official. We have brought seven back to you. And now you can enjoy your favorite programs on DMTV on its original channel, Seven, via Mediacom Cable. Programming is also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com backslash City of Des Moines. We're also on the city's website at www.dmgov.org. Scroll to the bottom and click DMTV Shows in the lower right-hand corner. I'm Shekinah Young, and that's your City Update. Thank you, Shekinah. Well, welcome back. The Blank Park Zoo will certainly entertain the whole family with all of the animals and wild exhibits, but there is a lot more to the zoo than the animal kingdom. My next guest is Ryan Bickle. He is the marketing director for the Blank Park Zoo, and he's here to tell us about the new things at the zoo from the parking lot to events and programs. Welcome to City Talk. Thanks a lot, and guess what? I didn't bring any snakes today. Oh, thank God. You know, I, I, can't, I can't do anything creepy crawly. Ryan knows that. Well, listen, let's talk about the construction that's going on at the Blank Park Zoo. What's in the works? Well, there's, a, there's been a lot of construction this past year at the zoo, and um, we are about ready to open up our seal and sea lion pool in March. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. You can actually come to the zoo now and, and see them, but we'll have our grand opening on March 17th. Okay. And uh, it's a tremendous improvement. There's underwater viewing. Ooh. There's a new deck that's uh, that you can see the programs on. And mm -hmm. There's also a big island in the middle that, that we'll be able to do the training programs on as well. So a lot better experience both for the, the public and for the animals. Um, we brought, brought in two new uh, seals from Vancouver. I was going to ask where yeah. they came from. So yeah, kind of cool weather. Yeah, they, 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 they were rescue animals. Iowa. They couldn't be released back into the wild. Okay. And so uh, they are coming to the zoo, and they should be out when the weather warms up in in a month or so. What's the training on the island? Is that for your staff? Or is that the, the public? We actually train the animals. So, oh. and, and the training is, um, we do little tricks and that sort of thing, but it's mostly for um, their health care. Mm -hmm. So they're able to condition the animal to, you know, have the vet uh, look at certain f f fins and flippers and <laughs> eyes and, and okay. that sort of thing. So, yeah. All right. Um, there's also something uh, new, I guess, is it the front entrance that you're changing or is that not so new at the zoo? Well, yeah, we are also changing the front entrance. And okay. if you've been by the zoo this winter, you've seen this huge yeah. sign and it's very cool. It's lit up at night now and everything. Mm -hmm. And basically the park north of Blank, uh, Blank Park Zoo mm -hmm. is now the new entrance. And so we've redone that. There's a, there's a pond and a waterfall and the new sign and a new entrance into the zoo and the old entrance was very hard to get into mm -hmm. uh, created traffic problems um, there were a number of accidents this is a lot safer a lot better a lot a nice parkway in we've had people from uh, all over the country say how nice this is going to be for us and so um, along with that mm -hmm. um, we we have new playground equipment we have new park facilities, a new shelter house. Wow. So there's still a park there, and it's all brand new. And you'll be able to, and at some point, not this year, but at some point, we are going to have an exhibit in that park that will be free for everybody. And wow. uh, it'll, it'll be quite the added thing for the community. Okay, so that raises two questions for me. Does that change the street address? Because I know I used to go down Southwest 9th and then enter. You'll still come in on Southwest 9th, but it'll be a, a, like a block and a half north of okay. where you enter. We'll close off the old entrance at some point, and uh, you'll come into the, the new one underneath the big sign. Okay. 
uh, you created a new park. So tell me what's in this park and is this park free to the public or is this part of the admission into the zoo? No, it'll be, the park will be completely free for the public. So okay. um, the, you can come in and enjoy the waterfall, the pond, you know, playground equipment and, and have a sack lunch or whatever, picnic lunch there ah. at the park. So. so you could actually, you could picnic a little bit before going inside of the zoo. Yeah, and eventually we'll have a free animal exhibit there as well. So Wow. Yeah. That's just amazing. I love the way the zoo is just ever expanding. Tell us about the admission price. What's included in that value at the zoo? Have things changed out there? Well, we're keeping admission prices just about the same as last year. Okay. Um, $11 for adults and uh, $6 for kids. And we also have a senior admission price as well. Mm -hmm. And um, that's our summer rates. Right now, during the winter, we we don't have as many animals out, and we have a little bit lower rates. And so and, and so that's when does the summer rate begin? It's usually about May first. Okay. It All depends right. on the weather, really. Yeah, when it's everything Iowa. can get out, and so yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk a little bit. You were mentioning all of the other projects. So you've got the new entrance, you've yeah. got a new park, potentially new exhibits. Yeah. Uh, we've got the seals. Anything else new inside of yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have the new Australia Adventure that we opened last July. That's all brand new. Okay. So that opened last July. So and you might have seen that. Wh what's in that? Oh, there are wallabies, wallabies. bouncing around. <laughs> there are emus walking around. You actually go into the exhibit and they they walk around you and you're part of the exhibit and ah. the path is red like the dirt in Australia mm -hmm. there is a building that is called an Australia station mm -hmm. which is like a farm mm -hmm. they're a sheep farm wow. and so it's all themed like that we have a kookaburra exhibit we also have a rare endangered, endangered cassowary and a cassowary is like a large bird like a, a ostrich or an emu oh. that that size but it has this colorful head um, blue, it's really neat. Wow. And they're very rare. There's only a few of them in the United States and, what and an they're experience. endangered in, so in you Australia. Get to, now, vision this. You, we get to walk in mm -hmm. and all of these animals, these birds, and mm -hmm. they're just there in their habitat yeah. and we're walking through. Yeah. That's we, too cool. We, we also recondition, are reconditioning our Japanese macaque Mm -hmm. uh, exhibit. The, the caging was, uh, had outlived its usefulness. So we're putting up a new caging. It'll be easier to see into the uh, exhibit. Mm -hmm. And we're also putting a tunnel that kids and, and guests can go into the exhibit in this tunnel and it'll be mirrored glass so the kids will be able to look out the glass and the monkeys will be looking at themselves in a mirror. <gasps> and we're hoping that you can get a really up close, you know, uh, view of the monkeys and they'll be, you know, looking at themselves oh in the mirror. Goodness. So it'll be really exciting when that gets done, and that'll be done this spring. So the monkeys enjoy using the mirror looking at themselves. Yeah, we, well, that's what we hope at least. <laughs> that should be really interesting. And then, then the final project, the final piece, we've also done a quarantine barn, mm -hmm. but that's sort of behind the scenes, but that, that helps us bring in new animals to the zoo. Every animal that comes to the zoo needs to go through quarantine, and so they don't bring diseases to the other animals. So that's an important piece that we have for our accreditation. So we completed that this past year. And then starting this spring, if all the funding and everything gets in place, mm -hmm. um, we'll be doing Africa. And um, we'll, we'll still have Africa open. There won't be anything off exhibit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be adding rhinos, uh, eland, a whole bunch of new animals to the zoo. Just, just north of the current Africa exhibit. And so that's going to be really neat. That, that should open, that won't open this year. That should open next year or the year after, depending on weather and construction issues. Now, now when you bring in the animals for the Africa, yeah. our Africa exhibit, yeah. uh, are these animals that rotate in during the warm weather and then they go, go back somewhere else? When Almost every forward. animal at the zoo stays there all, all winter long, with the exception of the camel ride camels go back home to Missouri. But everything else we have to have a winter holding area for. And, and so you might want to ask, you know, why don't we have certain animals? Uh, because we're a northern zoo, the reason we don't have elephants is that elephants need to live in, in her, uh, herds of four, mm -hmm. packs of four, and they need to have a large number of acres. Well, we would have to provide that indoors and, and outdoors. outdoors. And uh, so that's why it makes it a lot more expensive for a zoo in, in the northern half of the country to have 
big animals like elephants than, than zoos in the, the southern half of the country. Well, that's an interesting tidbit. I'm glad you told yeah. us that. I know the zoo has become a destination for special events. Tell us about uh, tell us about that because you have facilities for, and most people may not know about their facilities for special events and what they cost and what they're most often used for. Yeah, um, we have a lot of rental facilities. Mm -hmm. um, we have a room overlooking the Discovery Center that that can be used for uh, family reunions business meetings, mm -hmm. uh, weddings, um, holiday parties, all sorts of things, and that can be rented out. Okay. Johnny's Italian Steakhouse is our caterer, so Ooh, you can get great good. food at the great zoo. Great food. Yeah. yeah, and we also have a giant zooplex that can be rented and pavilions, so there's all sorts of things as far as that goes, that you can you can rent the zoo for an evening. We have a lot of company parties. We'll come in and rent the zoo for an evening and have 2,000 people come in for a, a a party for a company. And great parking on top of that. Yeah, free parking. Well, I know in addition to the individual events that yeah, I could plan, yeah, a wedding, yeah, an office yeah. party, a reception, uh, you do have some special gatherings at the zoo that are open to the public as well for in those facilities. Tell us about that. Yeah, some of the events we have at the zoo are um, Zoo Brew for adults. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be every I Wednesday night in June, July, and August. Okay. That's an over 21 event. Um, for the whole family, we have an event called Adventure Days, and that's going to be nine Saturdays th this summer. Okay. It's basically every other Saturday. Those are themed events with different activities and uh, fun things for the family to do, like uh, we're going to do Latino culture, oh. um, conservation and gardening, just a whole bunch of different wow, uh, cool. activities, each one with a different theme. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a Facebook fan night. Um, Jack Hanna is coming back to Des Moines, oh. so we're gonna, that's going to be a fundraiser for the zoo. Okay. It's not going to be at the zoo, but we'll have more information about that at blankparkzoo.com. Tell, tell our viewers who, who Jack Hanna is. Jack Hanna, of course, is, is uh, America's favorite zookeeper. You see him a lot of times on David Letterman. He's on the news a lot talking mm -hmm. about zoos. Um, he's sort of a fun guy okay. and you know crazy antics on, on the different TV shows, and, and, and but really knows his stuff about animals and cares a lot about animals and and we had him a couple years ago at the zoo and we had uh, thousands of people show up sure. so we're bringing them back and we're going to have a, a fundraiser it's going to be a different evening than what we had uh, a couple years ago and the ice age aren't you doing something with that what's that about? yes the uh, an ice age mammal exhibit now last year we had dinosaurs that were animatronic lifelike um, some of them were scale, some of them were full size mm -hmm. in our zooplex. This is the follow-up of that exhibit. So what, what came after the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Mm -hmm. And those mammals, um, you know, so we're going to dress the zooplex up after uh, as a, you know, an Ice Age exhibit. Wow. We're bringing in animatronic uh, animals that are like woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and that sort of thing. And, and That's going to be this spring this from spring. March 17th through June 10th. Wow, that is terrific. Well, there is so much going on, um, and I, I guess just quickly, admission and pricing, can you just help us? There's a flat fee for getting into the zoo, and then yeah. some of these special events are different pricing. Is that right? Yeah, just check our website. Now, okay. Zoo Brew and Adventure Days are free with the uh, cost of admission. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other one things, like Jack Hanna, the, those are going to be fundraisers, so there's going to be some additional costs there. So check our website at blankparkzoo.com for uh, those prices. Ice Age mammals will be free with zoo admission as well. Very quickly, can you give us a telephone number for more information too? Yeah, 285-4722. And of course, blankparkzoo.com is our website. Wow. Well, thank you very much. You always bring us great news about the zoo and we, we appreciate your time. Well, that wraps up this edition of City Talk. I hope you will join us again here on DMTV City Cable Channel 7. Every month we will visit a different city department and bring you new information about our community. Today's program can be seen again during the replays on the dates and times now listed on your television screen. You can also watch us online. Go to www.dmgov.org and click on Watch Live. DMTV is provided to the City of Des Moines by Mediacom Cable. And hopefully by now, you know that DMTV has moved back to its original position on the dial at Channel 7. And we're here to stay. And you'll find us here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the basic cable tier of Mediacom. 
For more information, visit the city's website at www.dmgov.org. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.